Hello everyone, this is Oshani from Jeddah.com. In this particular video, we will talk about books and resources for mathematics, physics and computer science. Stuff that we use regularly in our Olympiad and research programs, especially for elementary school students and middle school students. We have been using these tools for quite some time, for the last 13 years. And you can check the link in the description for our courses. But even if you are not enrolled in one of our courses, you can use these at your home. And I think they will be very useful. So let's get started. And we will start with elementary school students where the kids are just starting out with their journey in non-routine mathematics, physics or computer science. When we say non-routine mathematics, what we mean is problems that make you think. These problems, you cannot just plug in a formula and just solve it over 30-40 seconds or one minute. They are not repetitive in nature. Instead, they actually appeal to the intellectual capacity of the child. We call these type of mathematics slow math or slow physics or slow computer science depending on what you are doing. Now there are a lot of resources which focus on this type of mathematical sciences. I have divided broadly into three categories these resources. The first one is books that you can have. The second one are the set of activities that you can actually use. And the third one is the set of softwares and technologies that you can use. At Chinta, in our Mathematical Olympiad programs, we actually use all three of them. We also use the same in physics and computer science. But very easily you can use them at your home when you are training or helping your own child. So let's talk about the books. So to avoid making mistakes, I have actually written it down in a place. These are all Russian authors. So this is for elementary school students. The first book that I will recommend is Math Circle by the Bay. Topics for grades 1 to 5. This is by Zakharovich. And there are some more authors. It's a very beautiful book written by mathematicians who work in the Berkeley Math Circle program in the California region of United States. It's a fantastic book. It has activities and problems that motivates the child to think. There is another book of a similar flavor. It's called Math from 3 to 7. Math from 3 to 7. This is again a math circle for preschoolers. This is written by someone called Zovonkin. So you can Google that up. I, I also put a link of that in the description section. You can also check that out. All of the names are there. This particular book is like a diary of math circles where the coordinator or the faculty works with three or four kids and they, they together do problems and activities which make you think. Okay. That's the second one. The third one is called Math Circles for Elementary School Students. This is by Natasha Rops Roskovskaya. Again, a book of similar flavor. What we try to stress at the elementary school level is that you do not really need to memorize anything. In fact, that's not even suggested. Instead, take one problem at a time, try to think, try to spend time with that problem, make some doodles in your notebook, make some small models, communicate with others about the problem. And maybe you forget about the problem entirely after a couple of weeks. Children forget things all the time. That's totally fine. You do not need to remember anything. Think about these things as exercises for your brain muscles. You don't remember. That's not a problem. But you do it every day. That's the point. Okay. So these are the three books that we strongly suggest. Of course, in our elementary school, Mathematics Olympiad Foundation program, we use other problem sets and resources as well. So I'll let me tell you a little bit more about those problem sets. For example, we use problems from Australian math competition and math kangaroo 
These are very nice problems which challenge the mind of the students. So apart from the books, you should also try to use the problems from these competitions, which are actually interesting for the development of the child. Okay. The next set of things that we're going to talk about are activities. So these are very interesting in the sense they contribute as recess or breaks in the learning style of the child. So maybe the child is talking about geometric patterns. He's thinking about problems and trying to do some stuff and he's doing it for some time. But you don't want him to get tired. You don't want to stretch it for too long. So you have to make, take a break. You have to let the child take a break as well. So what we can do is you can use activities such as Kendaku. Kendaku is a Japanese game and Masiu. Masiu is also a similar Japanese game which requires logical thinking, analytical abilities and also the elementary arithmetic operations. These are just simple games which requires you to think mathematically. So we use Kendaku, Masiu and similar games in the class for like 5-10 minutes recess between discussion of concepts. They work really nicely. Students actually participate quite a bit. The third set of things are softwares. So in this day and age when we have a ton of softwares which help in education, it is important that you use some of them but you should not use too much of softwares but you should not use like you should not totally reject them as well. So, for example, in our programs, we use something called GeoGebra, which is a geometry software tool. We use it quite a bit. In the physics program, we use Tellurium. Tellurium is a uh, astronomy related software, which you can also use. It's av available for free. In physics, we also use something called Algodoo. Algodoo is also a physics virtual lab software. This allows the child to play with the different aspects of physics and learn on the way. So these three things, they're extremely important. Books, activities and resources, and then we have the software technology. Some of the students at Chinta actually use Nated to uh, write down mathematics in a more professional way. That's another thing that you can explore as well. But it's more for the middle school students. I would also end this particular video by some book suggestions for the middle school students. So the first book is called Math Circles by Fumin. It's a very beautiful book. You should definitely try the problems in it, especially both the years, year one and year two, but year one in particular, if you are just starting out in middle school. Then we have Algebra by Alexander Shen and Israel Gelfand. So this is a very nice book. You can It will get you started with algebra, but it will also make you think about the fundamentals of algebra. And the third book is called Kiselev's Geometry, Planimetry by Alexander Givendal. It's also a Russian book translated into English. It will help you get started with geometry and do interesting problems in it. In the middle school level, we also have some contest suggestions. You can use problems from NMTC or AMC 8, American Math Competition 8, or UKMT Junior, or University of Waterloo contests. These are excellent contests which have interesting problems. You can try those problems to get more practice. In physics, we suggest the All-Russia Physics Olympiad problems, which are also good for middle school students. They also challenge your mind. And in computer science, we actually suggest the Scratch software from MIT Media Labs. You can get started with Scratch and then start coding a little bit in Python maybe or C. It depends on your taste and the kind of problems that you're trying to do. So all of these resources, all of these books, softwares, activities should be used harmoniously and that will build an excellent learning path for you. All right, thank you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And you can also check our, our course details in the uh, description section. I hope you will like them as well.
थैंक यू एंड गुड बाय टेक केयर